Hi, this is Greg Bender, and I'm going to walk you how to set up and to review a sequential monadic survey online. And then I can also show you how it functions uh, in Survey Pocket. So as you can see, I set up a question here. I set up some basic uh, some basic questions. I'm doing a, I need a panelist ID. You'll see this right here is the filler text. This is actually the randomizer question option under advanced question types. And you'll see I get some chops choices here. I get a, I have to place this in there. You can put in whatever text you want. I get two options. I can randomly choose only one question displayed, or in this case, I want to randomize the order of the list of questions. It's, we're going to call it block rotation. You have to define what the block termination question is. You select this button, and it'll give you a list of all of the questions in your survey. This is the question that, after the rotation has occurred, that the survey will land on. So it's relevant to have that. You need to have this. The next thing that you'll have to do is put in the list of questions. The list of questions will already be here. What you're doing is you're defining the blocks. I define these blocks by a few different criteria. The first set of blocks, will all every question will start with EP. The second line of blocks, the second block will have X1 in all the questions. The third block will be will all have P01 in them. Okay, so we just go to save question. The next thing you need to do is you need to go to the end of each of the sec each of the blocks, so EP1, EP2, EP3, EP4. You'll see I've got a blank question here. I've just done a presentation question. The reason I've done this is so I could put a page break directly after it because I've got a matrix question here. But I've also set up branching logic. There's actually nothing to branch from, but I've set the default branching to the block randomization ending question. This is just how you set up this logic. You would update branching and you're done. So let's take a look how it performs online, and then we're going to walk through it on Survey Pocket. So we'll go up to the top of the survey, we'll go to preview. Here we are, my panelist ID, 56. Excellent, much too strong, might or might not, then I've got a matrix question. I want to show you that almost every question type is available to use in using this logic. Blank space, I can actually put presentation in there if I choose to. Now I'm in the POs, please notice. Let's say PO for each section. Ah, I'm not clicking. Continue. Same story. Now we go to X1. I want to show you that. So we've gone EP, PO, and X, right? Continue. Did the block randomization work, which was question 19. Continue. Thanks, and have a great day. As an example, I'd like to show it to you one more time to show how the randomization works. So this one will be 34. I go to continue. PO is now my first option. My PO response set are question types. I go to continue. X1 now is my second set of options. What this question type really afford, what this logic allows you to do is really to do good product testing in a random and a totally randomized nature. So this is online, not always the most convenient thing to do when you are doing product testing because you may be out in the field and internet connectivity may be a challenge. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go look at Survey Pocket on an iPhone in one second. Sorry, I need so now I'm using, Sur I'm using Survey Pocket on my emulator. I'm using an iPhone emulator. And you'll see I've downloaded the survey, the sequential monadic. Let's take it twice and make sure we know what we're doing. Start survey. Same freeform text. I'll be 78 this time. Done. Again, filler text. Notice we're in the EP section, right? EP3, EP4, blank. For the logic break. Now I've got the PO section, right? Now I should have X1 section. Did the randomization work? Yes. Thanks, and have a great day. Let's take the survey again and make sure that we're getting it truly randomized. I go to start survey, I go to next, I'll be 23, I go to PO is my first section again, I 
Let's see what's next this time. X1. So it has it has randomized. That's not what we received last time. And just to show us, so we've gone PO, X1, EP. Let's just validate that it's all working perfectly. Bang. Okay. And for grins, just to show it, I really like to be out in the field collecting data. I'll be 28. Next. EP is now first. And next will be X1. So we truly have shown you three entirely different display layouts and it is being totally randomly generated. Um, the order in which they're presenting is being totally generated randomly. So I'm out in the field. I've just collected my data. And the power about Survey Pocket is I just collected all my data. I've been out in the field all day. Hmm, I need to go back and you know look at this data. Hit synchronize. It's going to upload those responses. In real time, I just uploaded them. I'm going to go to my reports tab. I'm going to show you that those responses, honestly, within minutes, are now available for me to use um, in reporting and analysis. So now, as you can see, the data I just took uh, on August 8th at 1343. If you look at my clock, it's 145. So that data is two minutes old taken in an offline mode and is now fully available to me after after synchronization. It's fully available for any kind of uh, any kind of analysis or review I need to present. Thanks.